and welcome. I'm Brian Hewitt of Morning Star Communication, Newark Embassy Ministries, bringing you the love of the Lord throughout the entire world, going with the flow and the movement and the blessings of the Lord Jesus Christ as we bring you our broadcast around the world with the name, blessing all those through the name of Jesus Christ, from the name of Je Jesus Christ, and our all prayer, all answered prayer is answered from the throne room of God. So here we are again. Warm. A warm hello and warm welcome and good morning to those and good evening to those from around the world. I'm Brian Hewitt coming to you live from Los Angeles, California, as I bring you the love of the Lord through this time, of this time, in Jesus' precious name. We're going to be speaking of the restoration as we move into a few days before I start our, our series of uh, the journey of Joseph and Mary. And we speak... Speaking from, from our foundation scripture of Jeremiah 29, verse 14. Jeremiah 29, verse 14. Moving into the love of the Lord, guiding us to his day forever and ever. Amen. Brethren, so again, let's get a clean sheet of notebook, people. Let's, we'll be doing some tap dancing through the scriptures, and let's go before the throne of God and pray. Dear Jesus, we love you. We'll lay our hearts before you are the reason why we live from the secrets of our heart. We thank you for the unity of the Holy Spirit to be one mind and one judgment of Christ. We thank you for the time, your endless realm of your love, that guides us to the sweet embrace of that eternity that is kingdom bound, baptized in the name by the, by the name of the wisdom. The wisdom takes us by the hand and baptizes us in her journey, in her river, in her love, and baptizes us in the name of Jesus Christ as we are kingdom bound in the name of eternity. And moving into the growth of the flow and the movement of going and the whispers of God's wind flowing into the task that God wants us to go into. And in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Let's go right to our foundation scriptures, Jeremiah 29, verse 14. I will be found by you, says the Lord, and I will bring you back from your captivity. I will gather you from all the nations and from all the places where I have driven you, says the Lord. And I will bring you to the place from which I caused you to be carried away captive. In Jesus' precious name. Of this time, as the Lord lives and who brought up and led the descendants of the house of Israel from the north country and from all the countries which I had driven them, they shall dwell in their own land. Jeremiah 23, verse 8. God brings us from all nations and all places. And the restoration that we speak comes to us to, to the fulfillment of today's times. That the return of the Jews to Palestine and the establishment of Israel as an independent state in May 1948, and it was fulfillment of such prophecies. The rebuilding of the temple with a dome of the rock now stands. The restoration of an animal sacrifice as, as was done in the Old Testament. And there will be a second restoration. Isaiah chapter 11 verse 11. And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall set his hand against the second time to, re to recover the remnant of his people who are left. From Assyria and Egypt, from Pathos and Crush, from Elam and Shina, from Appa and the islands of the sea. The expression in the later days confirms this, just before the second coming, assuming that the times to which later days refers. The promise of the physical and economic restoration. Again, Isaiah chapter 61, verse 4. And they shall rebuild the old ruins, and they shall raise up the former desolations. And they, sh sh and they shall repair the ruined cities, the desolations of many generations. Moving back up to 35, verse 1 of Isaiah. The wilderness and the wasteland shall be glad for them, and the desert shall rejoice and blossom as the rose. But not just political and religious restoration, but also the land itself, along with ancient ruins, along with the promises of victories over their enemies. No longer shall they be pulled from all, from up from the land, suggesting victory over any who would try. And such are the arguments from the Old Testament from a later day restoration. Yet we seek a 
God's loving truth. We seek of his love. We seek of his journey. We seek of the embrace of the Lord Jesus Christ. Coming to the embrace of the now. Coming into this elegance that we have with a time of his love. Time of his capture. Time of the embrace that we have forever and ever. Amen. Brethren, this is our time. Our network is growing. We are flowing in the name of Jesus. We thank you for your su kind support and trust throughout this journey, throughout this day. As you move into the capture of God's, God's substance of his truth, we've had a blessed 2012. This year, Anita and I and our ministry team were at our best, but in 2013, we're going to be even better because of you. God has restored our health. God has restored our lives. God has brought our first full year and some, 17, 18, 17, 18 months, 18 months of being married to an anointed, beautiful wife. We come into the capture of God's love, the capture that we have for each and every one, guiding us to that sweet embrace of the now of faith. Yet the return of Jerusalem to the custody of the Jews, as expressed in Luke chapter 21, verse 24. And they, and they will fall by the edge of the sword and be led away captive into all nations, and Jerusalem will be trampled by Gentiles until the, end, until the times of the Gentiles are fulfilled. The city to be trodden down by the Gentiles until the time fulfilled believed to have occurred the rebuilding of the temple, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 4. Who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he sits as God in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. We push, we teach, that you, the elect, shall never be fooled that you, the elect, will, will make the sacrifices of choosing to be fed versus to be starved, being fed by, not the anointed one, by the evil one, that is, of the dark shadows of Satan. You can be fed by the living word of God. I have done that through many a difficult time when food was scarce. I chose not to be bought up, not to be given millions of dollars, not to be given false promises. I've seen enough people that call themselves gods that I think there's an overflowing aspect part of hell that will be shortly coming. Yet you can have all the jet planes and wet dreams and promises of this and that, but if you don't have God's love, you have nothing at all. And with this, we come into where we are today. Are we going to allow God to restore our temples, our health, our health? Are we going to let our vehicles be a habitation of God's glory? Are we going to see this time forever and ever? Amen. And with this, as Jeremiah expresses that the restoration is one after seven years of Babylon captivity, applied by Daniel to the time in which he was living. Daniel chapter 9, verse, verse 2. In the first year of, the, of his reign, I, Daniel, understood by the books of the number of the years specified by the word of the Lord through Jeremiah the prophet that he would accomplish 70 years in the desolations of Jerusalem. The second restoration as expressed as we said in Isaiah 11, 11. This could apply to the Babylonian restoration if the first refers to the deliverance from e Egyptian bondage in the days of Moses. In verse 16 of Isaiah 11. There will be a highway for the remnants of his people who will be left from Asia and it was for Israel in the day that he came up from the land of Egypt. In Jesus' precious name. 
However, the contact suggests a figurative restoration was made possible in the days of the Messiah. Romans 15, verse 12. And again, Isaiah, Isaiah says, There shall be a root of Jesse, and he shall rise to reign over the Gentiles, and him the Gentiles shall hope. 11, verse 5 of Romans. Even so that at the present time there is a remnant according to the election of grace. Brethren, we have come to share in the renewing of God's love, God's truth, coming into all aspects of God's deliverance, God's expression of his hope and his love. We have really made great accomplishments. We sing of this time, we sing of his love, we sing of the glory of God's loving truth. We sing of each and every one guiding us to a sweet embrace, feeling the love, feeling the touch, feeling this time right now. It's all very simple. How we can save the world, how we can move the changes of the world are by three simple words. Turn to God. And we can have one series after another, one Bible study after another, one preaching after another. But without this, without us using the examples of God and Christ, the prophets of teachings of Peter and Paul and the apostles, then we, don't, we, we fall on deaf ears. We fall away from God. Away from times. A lot of us in our younger days and even current days did play some sports. We always need a point of contact. Basketball it could be just a physical handling of a ball, the tip off time before the horn starts. A better analogy would be track and field. You're you're at the starting gate, your hands are in the line, your feet are in the blocks. This is where you are now. Those who need to be born again. Those who need to feel the coming restoration of the new you. Jesus loves you. Jesus wants every part of you. Jesus doesn't want 10%, 99%. He wants every part of the obedience of you. And just to remind everybody, this is the part of the broadcast that we do encourage our experienced viewers, Christian viewers, and to bring, to bring two to three unsaved acquaintances or friends of theirs to these broadcasts so they can share in the inheritance of God's love, God's truth. And if you are unsaved and you've been watching these broadcasts for some time and are still kind of shielding yourself around your other unsaved friends, then all of you should be coming to be born again tonight. And we seek that I, and share that to remind everybody that God is married to the backside, and that does include you, myself, you, Anita. Bonnie, David, and the whole world includes everybody and every one of us. And with this time, God's endless form of his love, I share this to you, Romans 10, 13. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You've gone from a whatsoever of sin being controlled by the yoke of bondage to the whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Repeat this after me. Let us all fall to our knees. Let us all be redeemed. Let us all focus on our reality of our redemption with God because we are redeemed. Dear God, I admit I am a sinner and need your forgiveness. I believe that Jesus Christ died in my place paying the penalty for my sins. I am willing right now to turn from my sin and accept Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior. I commit myself to you and ask you to send the Holy Spirit into my life, fill me, and take control to make us the people that you have always wanted us to be. 
I am lifting your name up to the heavenlies. But most important, the angels of heaven are singing your name before the throne of God. It doesn't get any better than that, that the angels of heaven are singing your name before the throne of God. Come, brethren. Your first offering should be the offering of obedience to get yourself into midweek Bible study, Sunday service of the saints, and fellowship, fellowship, fellowship in Jesus' precious name. And to guide into all aspects of his truth and his glory and his time. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Brethren, we have for you right now an invitation. We want to get to know you, know you, so please get to know us at BrianChewitt.com, BrianChewitt.com. We do come and encourage you to really get to get into the faith-based, spirit-led church. And as you learn of the wonderful truth of the Lord Jesus Christ, you'll see that, and you come to visit us at BrianChewitt.com. You see that we represent over 14 countries, a broadcast ministry, evangelical ministry, ministry, translation, many other auxiliaries that are at your disposal but to be a major part of, even this broadcasting. And we are going to show you a vision as we call you to join us as a financial partner. You have, are the sower, but the power is not so much in you, but in the seed that you plant. John chapter 4, verse 35 is your vision. The harvest is white. The fields are, are ready. You don't have to wait four months from now for your return on investment. The harvest is now. And with this, as you prepare for your journey upon the river of change, crossing the river of change into a new life, God is going to prune you and show you how to use these provisions for your task, for your journey. And we go from the vision to the, to the manifestation. The living word of God is always pregnant, revealing the manifestation of God's glory. And then, Malachi chapter 3 is birthed above your heads, that the windows of heaven will open up above you, put on blessings upon you, that you have no room in your straw house, but plant them to keep them or save them. In Jesus' precious name. Jesus' precious name. Now, there are a couple of different ways you can make your journey of descent as your tithes and offerings. One is, brethren, to revisit us at BrianTewitt.com. Click on the bottom left corner of your contact link. There you'll see our address. As well as our full name, which is Morningstar Communication Network, MCM Ministries. We are a 501c3 certified church here in the United States. Right above that is our donation link. You can send your tithes and offerings right through our website. We'll get your donations right away as well, brethren, as well. You'll get, you'll get a receipt after the first of the year for your personal records as well as your for your tax purposes as well. Brethren, this is your love. This is your truth. We thank you for prayers and support way ahead of time. In Jesus' precious name. Dear Lord, restore us, heal us, guide us into all that we have, into all that we share, into bringing us into the responses of your glory, to responses of your calling, to responses of your task. Give us your touch. Give us your healing. Give us the, your way, O oh Lord. And guide us to the sweet embrace of the Lord Jesus Christ. Romans 11, chapter 11, with 25 and 27. For I do not desire, brethren, that you should be ignorant of the mystery least you should be wise in your own opinion, that blindness in part has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles has come in. And so all Israel will be saved, as it is written. The Deliverer will come out of Zion, and he will turn away ungodliness from Jacob. And for this my covenant with them, when I take away their sins. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Brethren, It's very important end ending parts of our year with so much that has happened in the world so much that is going on in the world we encourage you we love you we want you all to be encouraged through prayer let's turn this world over 
Let's turn it upside down to the power change to be peacemakers and change makers and save each country that needs every soul we turn to Christ by simply saying turn to God. Let's go before the throne of God and pray. Dear Jesus, we love you. We lay our hearts before you are the reason why we live from the secrets of our heart. We thank you for the unity of the Holy Spirit to be a one mind and one judgment under Christ. We thank you for the loving truth of your time, your endless term of your love that guide us to the sweet embrace of the new us, the new earth, the new breath we breathe. We thank you for the new mercies of this day as the new mornings rise all around the Pacific Rim nations, Asian nations. We thank you for your touch, your love, the wisdom and discernment that you bless us with. So we cry out to you that we want to know ever some more every day, stronger than we knew you yesterday. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Brethren, and a good day. Good evening and good morning to you. That concludes our broadcast live from Los Angeles, California. And I'm Brian Hewitt. On behalf of my anointed, beautiful wife, Anita Hewitt, and the man, Brian Hewitt, we thank you for your time. Until next time. Do you see you up to date with all of our news and information of our exciting crusades coming to your part of the world at BrianHewitt.com. BrianHewitt.com. And our Twitter handle is at BrianHewitt. Do you stay up to date with our online store and our prayer request link and only prayer request? Please. And we come in sharing with you with the deliverance of delivering the world to the sanctification and the righteousness of the Lord Jesus Christ by preaching and teaching and going forth to the four winds of the world by saying, Turn to God. We walk by faith and not by sight. Au revoir. Adios. Good day.